Hi, it's The Wire. It's August 26, 2020. Let's talk about this Jacob Blake case and why I feel the Milwaukee Bucks made a big mistake boycotting today's scheduled NBA game because of what happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's be clear. I have no tolerance, no tolerance, for wrongful police misconduct. Right here online, I've made videos about the Breonna Taylor case, for example. Right, I've made videos about the Calkins case that involves a police officer who I feel might be responsible for the disappearance of the other party. I've been critical of police here online. I'm a big fan of Ben Crumps, the attorney for Jacob Blake's family. But every case has its own facts. Where it's not clean cut, where there's some facts that don't fit in a narrative that we actually need further exploration of, then I feel it's a mistake for people who want to protest police violence to jump to the conclusion that police violence took place in the case at hand. The Jacob Blake case is not clean cut, right? The narrative is that Jacob Blake is someplace trying to break up a fight between two women. He has at least three kids in the car with him. Isn't this the narrative? The police show up, he leans into a car where there are no weapons, right? May have leaned into the car to check on his children and then get shot seven times in the back. Now I'll agree, if those are the facts, then the police deserve to lose their jobs. They face criminal liability. But we already know their complications, don't we? Right, first there's the obvious. If he's there to break up a fight between two women, why would he bring three young kids with him? Right? But then, of course, there's the inconvenient second video that's now emerged. Right? There was the question of, gee, if he has his back to the police, why didn't the police use non-lethal force to try to subdue him if they wanted to subdue him? Did they have a reason to even want to subdue him? Well, now we're finding out that there was a warrant out for his arrest an open arrest warrant. According to reports, and I admit, the information is scarce out there right now, might be unreliable, but according to reports, the warrant was for a sexual assault of some kind. Now understand, I know some people are saying, hey, wait a moment, how do we know that the cops knew? about this open arrest warrant. Maybe they showed up, saw this black man, started hassling him. Well, let me just say, why are we so sure that Jacob Blake didn't know about this open arrest warrant? Isn't it possible that his actions were those of someone who did something wrong and then is confronted by the cops and may have thought he was getting arrested for that. May have thought he needed to fight back to avoid getting arrested for some wrongdoing he did in the past. Right, I'll agree too that an arrest warrant doesn't necessarily mean that the person did the crime. In the United States, we're presumed innocent until found guilty, right? But just understand, he had an arrest warrant for violent crime. 
at the time he interacts with the police. Now, of course, we understand that he had a physical altercation with the police. By the way, this is one of the problems with relying on posted videos on Twitter and on YouTube. Right? The original posted video just has a very short window of time. He's walking around his car. The police tries to grab his shirt. He's walking away from police. The cops already have guns out. He's walking away from police. They try to grab his shirt. He leans into the car. He shot several times. Right? So you have a whole group of people. I'm sure many of the protesters in Kenosha who feel that those are the facts. Well, that initial cameraman in interviews related that there was actually a scuffle beforehand between Jacob Blake and the police. And now we have a second video from the other side of the car from an earlier time period that shows the scuffle between Jacob Blake and the police. There's a physical interaction between Jacob Blake and the police. Also, many people want to know why the cops were so fast to pull guns on a black man. Well, now we're finding out from what the witnesses are saying that they actually tased him first. In other words, you have a guy with an open arrest warrant. He has a physical altercation with the cops in which he's tased. It's following that, according to reports, that he then turns his back on the cops and walks around the car. So the cops have guns pulled, after all. They've just scuffled with the guy. They've just tased the guy. This is post-tasing. They have their guns drawn. They walk around the car with him. He has his back to them. The cop grabs his shirt. You actually see the cop trying to, this is before the shooting, grabs his shirt to stop him from reaching into the car. And then he reaches into the car. The police officer had to wonder what he's pulling out of the car. The situation is already heightened. Right in time, we'll find out about police protocol, whether the cops acted within the police protocol. Right, but just understand, they don't know if he's pulling a knife out of the car, a handgun out of the car, or some serious weapon. By the time Blake is leaning into the car, he knows he's not cooperating with police. He knows he's already been tased by police. He knows he's disobeying the police. So let me say this. I don't like police violence. I don't like aggressive use of force by police, especially when it's unnecessary. Here, it's not a clean cut case. Doesn't look like there's a conversation between him and the police as to what he's pulling out of the car. Understand, the police go so far as to try to grab his shirt before firing to prevent him from leaning into the car. Cops have to think about public safety. If this guy with an open arrest warrant pulled out a machine gun and started firing at the people around him, who knows how many lives may have been lost. So on a case like this, just like the original person who posted the video omitted 
part of the interaction Blake had with the police right before that video got shot. Right, just as many protesters probably looked at that initial video and thought, oh my God, this is a shooting in cold blood. We now have more information. I'm not here to suppress protests. I'm not here to suppress outrage. But understand, when we're talking about police brutality, the conversation really hinges on credibility. It really hinges on the facts. An incomplete video that leaves out key facts like a tasing, like a physical altercation with the police from which Jacob Blake broke free of has turned his back on the police, is walking around the car to get something out of the car. That fact situation tells me that there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of missing information. People had to make split-second decisions. If the police knew that there was an open warrant for Jacob Blake's arrest for a violent crime, and we don't know one way or the other, right? A reasonable cop may have thought that he was reaching for a weapon. After the fact, saying there's no weapon in the car, ignores the lack of information that the police had given that Mr. Blake was not cooperating with them. Right, so as I see it, this is not Breonna Taylor. This is not the Calkins case. This is a case with a lot of uncertainty that we're going to hear major facts about in the coming days. So, I certainly agree that the Milwaukee Bucks have the right to protest. I'm just surprised that they would do so with so little information. Given the paucity of information, I believe it's too early for people to reach conclusions. We don't know all of the facts on this case yet. It is too early right now. Certainly it is too early to convince yourself that you know all the facts and that those facts warrant burning of cars, looting, uh, cancellation of NBA games, and things like that. Folks, let's see how this plays out. Right now, simply put, we don't have enough information. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. By the way, the recent video from the other side of the car can be found on TMZ.com. Thanks for stopping by.